Question. Are the mysteries of faith, as, for instance, the dogma of the Holy Trinity, as much beyond the natural power of the angels to understand as beyond ours? Answer. Just the same. They can no more of their own powers understand the great mysteries of faith as they really are, no more than we can. They must bow their heads as we do when reflecting on the Incarnation, the Blessed Eucharist, etc. Question. But in natural things that they can understand, is there a knowledge from inference in the angels, i.e., knowing one thing, do they conclude another? Answer. No. They see all natural things at one and the same most luminous glance. For instance, they know at one glance the essence of man's nature, all its properties, individual conditions, and so on, the same way with all the material world. And from this, we are also to conclude that there is no such thing as being deceived with the angels in those things which come within their knowledge. Question. What is meant by the morning and evening knowledge of the angels. Answer. Divines distinguish two sources of knowledge in the angels. One, by the beatific vision, the angels see all things present, past, future, and most perfectly in God. This is called the morning knowledge because both of it, its priority and its clearness. Two, the angels afterwards see things as they really take place. This knowledge is not so noble nor so perfect as the morning, and therefore, because of its lateness and its dimness, is called the evening knowledge. St. Augustine, in his City of God, says, The knowledge of a creature is, if I might use the expression, more discolored than the knowledge of it as seen in God, just as art is less than the first principle, nature, and therefore, very fittingly, is that knowledge called evening knowledge. St. Thomas says, quote, As of forenoon and the afternoon a day is customarily made up, so of morning and evening science the days and knowledge of an angel. End quote. It is well to remember these two terms. Question. Can the angels desire and love and hate or rejoice in sorrow? Answer. These things are attributed to them in the scriptures, but none of these external things affect their substantial bliss and glory and happiness in the beatific vision. Question. Are the angels endowed naturally with free will like man? Answer. Yes. The scriptures everywhere speak of them as obeying the commands of God, as worthy of reward or punishment, and this could not be unless they had free will. The Holy Fathers, St. Damascene, says, quote, an angel is a being endowed with free will, for everything that makes use of reason is also endowed with free will. And quote, St. Gregory, quote, God ordained that whatsoever is honored with reason and intelligence is ruled by free will. End quote. St. Fulgent, quote, God gave liberty to the angels that their loyalty may have the approval of their will. End quote. Question, are the angels of their own nature exposed to sin? Answer. Yes, the angels, not alone in their nature, but even raised to a supernatural order and strengthened, therefore, by God's grace, did actually sin. St. Jerome says, quote, It is God alone to whom sin cannot be imputed. All others, since they enjoy free will, may turn that will to either side. St. Ambrose, quote, Every creature, according to the capacity of his nature, receives the accidents of good and evil, and feels the same yielding to evil. St. Augustine, It is manifest that sin is destruction, annihilation, and that men, when they sin, become nothing. End quote. Now, according to St. Thomas, quote, Every creature has this of its nature to tend namely to nothing, since out of nothing it was made. End quote. Therefore, to make use of the words of St. Augustine in his City of God, quote, Every intellectual creature is mutable, i.e., prone to sin, since out of nothing it was made. End quote. Bousset says, Some creature, and they most perfect, are drawn out of nothing, just as others, and those all perfect though they may be, are exposed to sin. One being alone is, by his own nature, impeccable. He who is of himself, and who by his essence is perfect. 
but since he alone is perfect, it follows that everything besides is defective, according to holy Job. Quote, and he hath found deprivation even in his angels. End quote. Again, the rule directing angelic intelligence is by nature either intrinsic or extrinsic. If the former, the rule would be identified with the very nature of the actor, and could not, therefore, be deviated from. But if the latter, then it can. Now the rule in the case of the angels, as well as, as in that of man, is the sovereign will of God, which is extrinsic, and which may consequently may be deviated from, and hence angels may sin. To quote the words which the great bishop of Muo addressed to a fallen angel, quote, Truly, everything drawn out of nothing has still some of its belongings. You were sanctified, but not essentially holy as God. You were ruled at first, before you fell, not as God, whose own will is his rule. But you were ruled by an indefectible sovereign will, the will of God. End quote. To be naturally peccable, it is sufficient that one can be drawn aside by any passion, as pride, envy, hatred, and also that one be free to follow or resist that passion. Now, that is what happened in the case of the angels. Question. Does not sin presuppose in the intellect a defect either of truth or of attention to that truth, and that surely such could not be in the case of the angels? Answer. Generally, indeed, there is some defect, for it is hard to believe that an intellect such as the angels, strongly and intently gazing on truth, could, without that defect, give way to sin. Yet that is not absolutely impossible. But an angel, speaking now only in the natural order, does not at every moment consider all the things it might consider, nor again does it consider all with equal attention, for this is the necessary consequence of the possession of free will. Therefore, it can fail in attention, and in will too. At any rate, it is certain that they, like us, possess, happily in one sense, unhappily in another, the great gift of free will, whereby they might obey or disobey, love or hate, the great creator of all. <laughs>